show on our color color to buckle. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it around, we're going to lay it down, we're going to staple it, and then we're going to tape it, and then it's going to dry out, it's going to stretch out, and you're going to have this flat surface. By the way, when you put water on one side of a piece of paper and not on the other side, it buckles again. <coughs> now then, you've got to dig. You see all those staples? Come up later and look at this. It's, I just gave up and cut it out so that I'll never do that again. No staples, no paper, no uh, tape. Just lay the paper on a surface and go to work. What I do is I, I flow the, the water around, but I don't really scrub, because it eventually it will start just, you know, damaging the surface of the watercolor paper. There's a lot of water on the back, back side. Now, if you're painting on Formica, you'll have a little water excess later. I know your paper will be floating in the water. When you paint on a piece of plywood, the plywood has a tendency to absorb some of that moisture, which is kind of helpful, but I don't do that in the studio, by the way. I do them in, in classes, but I have big tables of Vermont, and I just work on Vermont. A little color there, who cares? Unless that was supposed to be a white spot on painting. Now, let me know if I start getting my bald head in the middle of it. And you can't see it. It does not hurt my feelings at all. If you say, I can't see, you're blinding me. Okay, pretty wet. In college, we used to take our full trinket by 30 sheets of paper and put them in the bath of a big tub that Cap had in the, show, in the art room and let them soak all the time he was doing his demonstration. And an hour or two later, we'd pull them out. Well, they were wet. You can't do that with heavy watercolor paper, by the way. Watercolor paper has sizing in it. 140 weight paper, you can soak the tar out of it. 300 weight paper, you ruin the paper by soaking it. You can put a lot of water on it. You can paint with it. You can put it up on the surface to get a wet and wet wash, but you can't soak it. Okay. <coughs> step one. You thought this was step 15 already, hadn't you? Draw that. Put your Nike on there. You can do this, but I just come back to my sponge. Not wet. I don't want a lot of water in it, but I want a little moisture in it. And I'm going to push that down into the water a little bit. Little wrinkles, good. Every wrinkle helps. Wrinkles make texture. What I'm doing, do it. Now this one I'm overworked. Uh, this one, I'm telling the girls why though, all these subtle little colors come out because of the napkin. Um, the twist and turn sometimes make texture for your for your painting, which is kind of cool that you can't get with a direct brush stroke. Now then, I didn't clean my palette. Bad boy. I'm gonna throw a bunch of yellow up in the blue, or it will get green on me. My lip, my palette is very limited in colors too, by the way. Although I'm doing a lot of purple tones now and stuff. I'm going to have to buy some new colors. Alrighty, I'm going to throw in... Now I'm going to cheat a little bit. We don't have time for my paper to dry. So, I have already laid in the beginning wash. Since we're going to paint this painting, I need to make sure... I don't want you to see too much of it first. I need to make sure I'm putting paint pretty close to where it goes. It doesn't matter a whole lot, but I'm going to make it look a little bit like it. Got a bump, bubble right there. It might be a little bit on the dry side. Push that down like that. Get the air out of it. Yeah, I did use blue. I'm going to take a little bit of color, and I'm going to just throw the color in places on the outer part of the composition. Did a real bad thing, I think. Some paper has a watermark on it. It's right there. Oh well, way it goes. It's kind of like having Neiman Marcus in your collar, I guess. It says D arches. Little brown color. Little value change. For now, it's kind of dull. I want some greens up in the. I'm not going to go right to the base because it's already bleeding over to it. 
I'm going to slow down and get a little more paint, a little less water. What you're working in all the time, lots of water, real fluid water. Put it on the wet paper, and it's going to really blend and disappear. When you want to get more power, more darks to your color, you've got to slow down, spend a little more time in your pigment so it's drier. Then you get a little more color, a little more value change, actually. Now, again, at any point, jump in and say, what the heck are you doing? <coughs> a little red. <coughs> that one, by the way, everything you see now will be three-fourths gone when I pull the, the uh, napkin off. Okay, I don't use black but when I'm doing, I kind of was thinking, I wish I had black. You can take burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, maybe some alizarin, you know, green, winter greens, anything just kind of mix good. <coughs> and the or burnt sienna is what makes it really turn black. I'm taking some time to dig because I need a big brush, I need more color. <coughs> okay. When you're mixing colors to make black, you get some color in that black rather than just a flat black, which becomes really and truly becomes uh, relatively uh, dull when it dries in value. Take some straight blue. So my, my base probably won't be just as black as you see that that saw that picture be. I'll go over to one of my rounds. I've got some yellow flowers. Since I'm painting through a napkin, I don't have to come out and mix on my palette all the time, which is what you normally do when you're being careful. But when you're going to smash a bunch of paint around and you want to go through the napkin, you just do such. Dig into your paint. Uh, some yellows over here, maybe. And, and what kind of flower is this? Can anyone tell me? No flower. Buttercups. Some flowers, some flowers. Beats me. <laughs> Whatever your heart desires. Whatever it looks like when we get through, if we're lucky. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put in, so right now I'm going to put in a couple of strokes. It's going to be vegetation. Change, put a value change. Some of this I'll go back and re-emphasize pull the napkin off. Oh, by the way, clean brush. Brush comes out of the water container full of water. And you can't put that into your painting. It's going to flood. That's the quickest, easiest way to <laughs> hurt. Nice people blot, you know, put it on their clothes or whatever. Is that, is that about the height that you work off of in your studio? No, it's too low. To the big, oh, about like this. Yeah. I've got you know those old-fashioned big drawing tables that are not what you know, are they? Yeah, you know, we bought one in auction one time. It's, it's real big and a lot taller than this. Are you sitting on the stool when you're working? Uh, when I'm doing this, I stand up. I don't like to sit down when I'm doing the doing washes. Uh, when I start doing detail, particularly detail when you're doing more realistic stuff. I sit down and, and get control. Red, a little alizarin in there for a, a value change. We'll run the red off the page over here because I did it over there. No matter what I do, it won't look the same as the first one. <coughs> I'm putting some darks in intentionally because later I'll come back and in flux a little this and a little that with white paint, little bitty flowers, as you can see in the demos up there. Uh, let's see. Have, let's see. I'm make sure I get some good greens down here or some darks for the greens. 
Now, I need to know where those flowers are. Put one more little bit of them up here. Hey, I'm going to laugh I had air when I started this. <laughs> I did a, uh, I was sent out many years ago to Florida to do a screen test for a television show they were thinking about doing. And uh, they saw me lick my brush and said, hey, this guy, you, you can't do that. You cannot put that back you know, We get a lawsuit. You can't do that. dark center to the red. These are going to be the cool little flowers when you get through. And you don't have to you don't have to know how to paint on those. It's very creative. College bunch. Or any bunch. Mm -hmm. And I'll re-emphasize the color a little bit. So um, Let me show you something else. 
makes wonderful mountains. Now, I've got some kids. My kids used to win lots of awards. And we have a, a competition in, in, in the nation. I've only heard of the aviation com, com, uh, competition and the duck step competition and the uh, 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 aviation. And, and what I would do with my kids at school is we'd do something with ground. I'd have to stick in a, in fact, I just had a kid that I know real well do look for. A, you, you know what a, airplanes that fly through pylons called air racing? That was his choice for the theme this year. And he puts the mountains through a wash like this. So it, what happens, here's what happens. The judge comes along and he sees all these kids' paintings. And they're all, some pretty good. He looks at this. Well, we have to hope whatever else we put in the painting is good, okay? <laughs> it looks nice. But when they see this, they think, how could you do that? And that holds that judge's attention long enough to give you a great chance to be a winner or be a placer. Whereas so many paintings kids do, and all kinds of are the same. There's no punch or, you know, it just, it's just... What kind of texture was that on that uh, one that you just held up? By, by texture, what, what paper-wise? Yes. That was a piece of 300 weight. Oh, okay. So you haven't done anything to it. This would be step one, and the sky is a little bit too light. The mountain's great. Now you come in and create a complete composition, mountain scene, trees, foreground rocks, the river going through it, whatever you want to do. You make it really not, you push that mountain off in the back. Uh, the mountain right now is all you see. So you've got to do a little bit of creative design to make that into a painting. Step, the next thing I do is I'm going to set my flowers. In other words, you see splotches of color, and you, you probably would say, well, that looks kind of like a flower, but I don't know. So I mix a dark. I don't even care if it's pure black. Not real black. I don't like black and watercolor. You know, in school, you get the frame watercolor sets and they have a black and a white. Uh, they could put some nice colors in with those words. Do you let that first step completely dry? Yes. Because anything I do now is damp and yeah. fuzz. But here's how I do it. Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to be photorealistic. I'm not going to go in and make a... I don't want to pick my flowers. I don't, I'm not going to make a name of a flower. I'm going to come back and maybe accent a little. Maybe under an edge. And then I'm going to go with the flow. To me, this yellow is on top of that red. So I'm going to do the yellow. And I don't really care to dry. <coughs> when your brush skips, you don't have enough moisture in your paint, by the way. <laughs> Is my head in the way? No, I'm not used to this <laughs> level. Now this flower is definitely behind that one. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in like this. When you're using a script liner, the more straight up and down you can use it, the more, more uh, you have control of thin lines. When you lay it over on its side, any brush has a tendency to be pointy, and as you move it, it goes, spreads apart the point, and you get a smear. Nothing like having a real skinny little branch, and all of a sudden, all of a, sudden a monster branch above it. Nature doesn't do that very often. By the way, turn, always feel free to turn your paper according to how you're right-handed, what works best for you. And can you do that if it's built to that board? Not very easy. Another slam. You have your people can take theirs. <laughs> no, no, they, they, they do if they want. Some, some do there, there are probably some reasons that might be good. I haven't figured out what they are yet. <laughs> nice work. Um, this little the red flowers over here. We can <coughs> you can go within the color range. It's a little different kind of flower, isn't it? I don't have a clue what it is, but it is a different color, different shape of flower. <coughs> oh, 
I wasn't just going to put in the classroom, girls. I was too busy writing referrals instead of teaching. No, I really was. I was fun. They were working. Now, I'm going to read you. This is a conglomerate of stuff. I'm going to leave it for now and decide what I'm going to do with it later. So, I have my, this is my major flower. That's going to be the major gist of the floor. Everything else now is an accent to fill up spaces, to make it more interesting, to make it busier, to take away all this horrible black, to let some things dangle down the black. Kind of fun. This is the fun part, in my opinion. It's your little quiet. Now, in the classroom, I, I use this with my kids, but I never let them touch it. When they say, which person I got to need white, I come over and squeeze some out. You know why, too, don't you? But somebody would squeeze half the tube out. And this stuff is kind of expensive, particularly to use it in the classroom with kids. Say again what it is. This is Lucas, L-U-C-A-S, gouache, G-O-U-A-C-H-E. Now, would you, for my students, would you mind explaining the difference between gouache and watercolor? Good. Watercolor is transparent. It's pure. You put red down, it's a beautiful red. Okay, whatever. Gouache is opaque. It covers everything up. It's not transparent. When you mix, all gouache is, is transparent watercolor or watercolor mixed with white paint, which they even sell the gouache paint, you know, by the colors. It's an opaque. It's like painting, more painting, more like painting an oil, oil painting or acrylics when you're using gouache. If you see someone that says I'm a gouache painter, they're they're using oil painting techniques more than watercolor techniques. I do a lot of gouache, but I start out with watercolor, but I do get away from it pretty quickly. Now there's a really great brush. Can you see the blue? Now there's a brown. Brown being wood, no coating anymore set in the water too much. I always tell people in my classes, do as I do, not, I mean, as I say, not as I do. Okay, oh, great place for a big flower. Now, I press down and come in. I don't, now, if you wanted a, a little Shasta Daisy look, I guess you could do it this way. All right? So, but, it's better to go down with a rounded brush, not a pointed brush, and press down and pull to the center. You'll get a nice little rounded shape. If, that, if that's what you want, if that's what you want. Are you a purist, Candace? Is this making you look ill? <laughs> no, not at all. <coughs> I, I, I co taught a workshop with a Fame, pretty fame, pretty well known, was not famous, but well known Arkansas artist named Sheila Parsons. She had workshops all over the world. And why in the world we decided to teach a class together? I had to get up and say, use white. She said, don't use white. It's a sin. You know, you can't do that. <laughs> I also came into class one day, and up on the board, she had big, gigantic words drawn Thou shalt not lick thy brush. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, this is what you do if you want white flowers. But let's say, oh gosh, let's have some color. Now, you couldn't do this if you had wet paints, because you first time you put that brush into your pure pigment, it would ruin it. It would all be gouache. <laughs> you know? But when it's dry, I can cheat. I can just let's see. Clean that off for a minute. I'm going to have to clean my yellow. Mixing green, I've got a lot of dirty yellow on there now. Greenish yellow. I'm going to take this turquoise. It's kind of a pretty color. I'm going to take some white paint with it. And I'm going to do, do some little flowers over here. Sometimes you can have them straight, looking straight at you. Sometimes you can have them just really dilly dally down halfway. Time. I want them to look like flowers, but I'm really not caring if they are a perfect flower. <laughs> and you 
probably say, boy, you hit that one on the head. Make sure they're on the head. Perfect. We'll mix a little, let me get my orange going. You can't take red and make red flowers. Why? With white paint. No. Don't touch cheap. Turns what? Turn pink. I hate pink. Oh, I hate pink. <laughs> so I would, if I want a red flower, I'll take my orange, put a little red with it, and we have a multicolored flower. Orange is in this case, or a little more red in it. You know, I can come back and put a little red on top of that. stupid because you don't want to see me do this same repetitious stuff all night long. Um, one thing that's kind of fun to do, I did sort of right here, but these are little little gobbledygook flowers. What are those called? Little, they look, they're just little bitty things and they look kind of pointed. Hey, those big purpley things right there, what are those called? Come on, ladies, you guys are a culture, surely. <laughs> I'm going to take some alizarin. I don't have a good purple. I am really bad. But I, I need to get a good purple because I really move into a lot of purples lately in my serious paintings. But you come in here, you dot, 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 dot. this one. I'm really taking time to plan what I'm doing, as you can see. And it's really important. And I think Being fast is better than being slow because you think too much.